Hello one and welcome one and welcome all. My name is Maponga J, broadcasting live from uh, Zambia. If there is anything that has been fascinating to me for the longest of time in the issues of biblical interpretation, number one is what we might call general interpretation of scripture. This is when you pick up the Bible and then find out the passage that you are reading. How is it interpreted or how does it duplicate itself in the biblical text? So if you are looking at the story of creation in the book of Genesis, you want to say, well, God is creating in Genesis. Then you run through the Bible again and see how is he creating and recreating people and lives throughout the whole text. So the creation of Adam and Eve, as it were, must also be understood in the creation of Noah and the creation of Abraham and his character the creation of Moses, the creation of Israel, the creation of... And then you begin to have a beautiful view into the biblical text that it, it stops being locked in one part and era of time, but rather that progressive interpretation of that creative power. So every time he is creating, he has to stand away or stand up from where he is, get to a certain place, identify material, put it together, shape the material, breathe into the material, and then put it out there. If need be, look for support structures. In the other time of Adam, then he must look for support structures like Eve, and then give them territory, give them land, and give them a mission statement of what they must accomplish. Now, when you establish that process and principle of creation, then it is easy by the time you are beginning to try to preach on any other character that you keep in the back of your head the story of Moses. How is Moses created? How is he thrown into the water and how is he picked up? Who are the companions and the friends who will help him to journey his path? Where does Pharaoh come into place? Where does Pharaoh's daughter come into place? Where does Midian come into place? Where does Zipporah come into place? Ultimately, where does Aaron come into place? Okay, you can talk. Okay, I'll give you a companion. So you begin to enjoy, as it were, the reading of, of text and scripture. Whether you want to talk about David, you want to talk about Tamar, you want to talk about Rachel, you want to talk about Rahab, you want to talk about Matthew, Luke, John, everybody, the entire biblical text, if you use the creation story as a funnel, you enjoy the text. That's what I call general interpretation of scripture. And after general interpretation of scripture, there's something we call specific interpretation. This is when you get down to the text itself and just want to see how is this text positioned. What is the language used? What is the text used? What is the geography of the place? What is the economics of the place? What is the politics of the place? The social dynamics of the place? Anthropological extrapolations and everything in it. Then for me, this moves the modern preacher away from being eisegetical preachers who take their own perceived ideas and impose them on the text. Rather, you become exegetical where you get into the text and allow the text to speak for itself in its historical setting. Speak for itself in our present system Lebanon environment. Speak for itself into the future in which we think the text, the text is going. Therefore, scripture stops being only looked at as a historical text, but it also becomes contemporary and it also becomes futuristic. If you have to talk about the story of Abimelech Ab 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 going to look for a wife for Isaac, we understand the importance. When you want to get married, go back to your mother's, mother's house. That's where beautiful women are found. And when you go there, please carry some dowry with you. You know, when you get there, look for a woman who is by the well, who is hardworking, a woman who can feed your, your, your camels, and etc. A woman who can take you home to her family, a woman who is of service. So these for me are the qualities for the modern young man. You don't just read up, merely go and find a wife for my son. And you as a young man, you're not even able to look into the text and say, if I am to look for a wife, do I have lobola? Where are these women found? Where are the wells today? where beautiful women are found. They're not in discourse. They're at the well. So you need to find out the place which tests the characters of people, where you can find a good woman who is there. What tools do they have? And what attitudes do they, do they show and demonstrate and portray? Then you, you enjoy the text as it were. I'm going to use any passage of scripture to speak to the audience. Because by simply understanding the environment in which the text is set, you're able to enjoy it. But since I'm talking to the greater audience, hey, Maponga, nye, nye, Maponga, Maponga has fallen. Now, really sit down a little bit. Come around me, young children, and I will show you the wisdom of old. In my young days, I believed everything. In my old then days now, I question everything. I have a passage of scripture that I would like to use, quite a dynamic, multifaceted way of interpreting scripture. 
I would like to combine for you two or three passages at most to the issues and the constraints of time. I would like for you to hold your hands in your Bible and I pray that you gentlemen who are in the studio, you'll be taking these passages when you get back home and put them nicely at the bottom there so that people can be following. And test me if see what I'm saying is according to the text. Number one, Daniel chapter 7 gives us a, a beautiful, beautiful extension of the prophetic...